Hey guys, and welcome to another Bible study with me. My name is Erica, and I do Bible studies every single Wednesday at 7 p.m. Currently, we're in the book of Matthew. We're actually on chapters five and six today, but I think we're just gonna be doing chapter five today so we can take it a little bit slower. I will always have all of the other Bible studies, maybe if you've missed out, linked down below so that you can just go ahead and watch them at your own time. So we know that on the last Bible study, Jesus was getting tempted. Well, the devil was trying to tempt Jesus, right? We know that he was getting into healing and miracles and Jesus got baptized with water in the Jordan River. So there was a lot that we covered on the last chapters three and four so i definitely love like bible studies on here because i feel like they're not scripted i get to sit here and just like enjoy the word of god with you guys so i absolutely love bible studies um aside from the other videos that i do so we are in matthew chapter five today but first let me pray for us before we get started father god i thank you so much for the people that are on this video and the people that are going to come, I pray that through unity uh, virtually, we would together be able to be edified and learn things, see things that maybe we haven't seen before, that you would speak through me, God. Give me the words that I need and that my words will be seasoned with salt. And help my brothers and sisters virtually to also process your word and unveil eyes if you need to. Knock on the doors of our heart, open our hearts, our minds to you, O oh God. Amen. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so it says, Introduction to the Sermon on the Mount, verse 5, or chapter 5. Now, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of my righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say things, and falsely say all kinds of things of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So here is God, how beautiful, like just laying it out, right? Blessed are the people that are meek. Blessed are the people that are peacemakers. So he's, so he's labeling all of these people that are like this, have these characteristics blessed, right? So I find that, you know, with Christianity, a lot of people walk into it and, you know, there's still a lot of hot, a lot of habits that God needs to break through um, that we've had when we were in the world. However, Christ is telling you, Blessed are the peacemakers. Why would he say, why would he say blessed are the peacemakers? Well, because obedience is being followed. Like when you're being a peacemaker, right? When you have a meek spirit, a humble spirit, these are all things that the Bible teaches that we have to be like. When you are walking in humbleness, walking in forgiveness, walking in all of these qualities, God sees that you're actually following his word and then he can bless you. So that's why he says, blessed are those that do this. So that's why he says, blessed are those who are meek pure in heart, all of these different qualities, because you it's easy to call yourself a Christian, but when it's time to get biblical, there's a lot of people who are lacking these things, right? There's a lot of people who are not meek, they're not kind, they're not humble, they don't hunger or thirst for righteousness. And God is saying, blessed are you when you do those things. And then he talks about getting persecuted. You know, a lot of people wanna be liked. They wanna be, you know, they wanna be loved. But in reality, we were put on this earth to be hated because they hated Christ first. They literally wanted to kill him. From the very beginning, King, King Herod, we learned in the uh, beginning of the, of, of the book of Matthew, King Herod wanted to kill this savior, this, this said savior who was going to save the people from their sins. Already had it out for Jesus. And so if they wanted to kill Jesus from the very beginning, from the time that he was a baby, 
just imagine still that that same spirit, right, that is is carried out, who is now trying to destroy the children of God. Satan hates the children of God, but of course they will not prosper. Amen. All right. So verse 13, you are the salt on the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. So if you're called to be the salt on the earth, that means that it's salty. That means a lot of things that you say, a lot of things that you believe, a lot of things that God puts on your heart to speak on. People are not going to like it. People are not, they're going to be triggered by it, right? But if you're called to be the salt on the earth, that means you're called to be different. You're called to be set apart. You're not called to go along with beliefs and delusions and things that come from this world, but you're called to stand firm on the word of God and what comes from the word of God. Verse 14 says, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your father in heaven. So he's talking about good deeds here. He's talking about having light. And, and of course, if you have a light, you're not going to put it under. When you have a light, you have a light in you, woman and man of God. You have a powerful light in you. And that is Jesus Christ. And Jesus, sorry guys, my lights are flickering right now. They're messing with me. So you have a powerful light inside of you. And that is the Holy Spirit. And we are to share that light with everyone in everything you do. And he talks about good deeds. So in good deeds too. And good deeds is a good one because sometimes like we're so focused on ourselves that you don't really think like, let me stop to do something for someone else, you know? So that's, that's another one that definitely checks me every time. All right. Verse 17, the fulfillment of the law. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly, I tell you until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will be by any means will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Verse 19, therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So right there, God is already making sure that the disciples know a distinction between those who are going to be called great in the kingdom of heaven and those who are going to be called least. So verse 20, for I tell you that unless... Your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law. You will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. And if you guys don't know, the Pharisees were very religious people who missed God. They literally missed God because they were trying to be legalistic and they were trying to be politically correct about everything, right? That they missed God. They absolutely just were blinded to him, but they thought that they were, they were, they were in the right path, but they were not. And so God is saying, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. So that's really strong right there. Now we go into murder. Verse 21, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. So let me go, let me look and see what Raka is in Hebrew. Because remember, the, the, the text of the Bible originated um, in, Ara it's originally Aramaic, Hebrew, and probably something else that I'm missing out. But those are the typical languages. That was the language that the Bible was written in, that they spoke. And so you have to look at what these definitions mean in Hebrew. Okay, Raka in Hebrew. So raka in Hebrew means worthless or empty. So basically, let's 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 switch that word, right? So instead of raka, it says, so this is a little bit halfway down from verse 22. So it says, again, anyone who says to a brother or a sister, worthless or empty, because that's what it says raka means in Hebrew, um, is answerable to the court. 
And anyone who says you fool will be in danger of the fire of hell. Verse 23, therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. So God basically does not want anything from you, gifts, sacrifices, anything, if if you are not um, at peace with your brother or sister, at least, at least the peace that you can control, right? Because we can't control what others do and things like that but peace in within yourself set matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court do it while you are still together on the way or your adversary may hand you over to the judge and the judge may hand you over to the officer and you may be thrown into prison truly i tell you you will not get out until you have paid the last penny Verse 27, adultery. You have heard that it is said you shall not commit adultery, but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to go to hell. Divorce, verse 31, it has been said anyone who divorces his wife must give her a certificate of divorce. But I tell you that anyone who divorces his wife except for sexual immorality makes her the victim of adultery. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. So Christ will still see you as married if you separate because of anything that is outside of sexual immorality. So that could be lusting, pornography, addictions, anything like that. Like, I, I do believe that God wants to restore marriages. God always wants you guys to try to work it out, but have him at the center of your marriage to work out the situations. But this is the only way that you could justly have a divorce is if it's through sexual immorality. So your spouse was sexually immoral. He had an affair. He, he physically cheated on you, emotionally cheated, um, lust, pornography. Any of those things are sexual immorality and you have a right to, you know, be able to divorce your husband if you want to. Now, I do know that in situations, you know, God can definitely uh, turn the situation for good, heal your husband, heal you, and move along. Because if you divorce for anything other than that, then to God, you're still married. So if you try to be with someone else, to God, now you're committing adultery because you weren't supposed to be divorced in the first place, aside from sexual immorality. Oaths, verse 33, again, you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not break your oath, but fulfill to the Lord the vows you have made. Oh, that's good. That's good. And I'm not even going to, I'd love to be real with you guys. This is good because I remember the other day I was supposed to fast. I was like, I'm going to fast. And then I didn't fast, but I fasted the next day. I fasted, you know, I, I did my thing, you know, but I'm getting into fasting. I'm learning more about fasting and things like that. And I, that just made me think of that, you know. So when you say, God, I'm going to do something, like, make sure you do it. Like, take it serious, guys. Um, the Bible says it right here. And it convicted me, too. So verse 34. But I tell you, do not swear an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is God's throne, or by earth, for it is God's footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not swear by your head, for you cannot make even one hair white or black. All you need to say is simply yes or no. Anything beyond this comes from the evil one. So he's talking about when people say, oh, I, I swear to you. Oh, I swear to God. Oh, I swear to this. Oh, I swear on my life. Don't do that. It, it literally says it right here. Just answer yes or no. It says anything beyond this comes from the evil one. Eye for eye, verse 38. You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. Give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. This one, guys, just that whole bit right there is like, when you think about it, you're just like, wow. 
like we fall short like we fall really 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 short like jesus is getting into it with his his disciples right now he's getting into the meat and potatoes like the hard stuff and and this is here because he wants us to know this he wants us to follow this very convicting guys very convicting verse 43 you have heard that it was said love your neighbor and hate your enemy but i tell you Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your father in heaven. He causes his sons to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. If you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your people, what are you doing more than others? Do not even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly father is perfect. So he's saying, okay, um, well, you, you know, yeah, you saying you're a loving person, but you only love your friends. You only love those who maybe look like you or appear like you, right? You're not a loving person to everybody, even your enemies. And so he's saying, well, everybody can do that. Anybody can do that and just love the people that they feel closest to, love the people that they feel they can relate more to, but blessed and perfect are those who are in those who are striving to be like Christ, which are the ones who love their enemies, who love those who are outcasts, who loves people that are even worldly, right? Because we are to love the person, but hate the sin and expose the sin. So that is just so beautiful right there. Um, truly, when you think about it, it's like God, God is literally giving the disciples gems, gems right now, because through this, we can live a righteous life. We can live a righteous life through God because the Holy Spirit walks with us each and every day, every second of every day. And through the Holy Spirit, we can experience true righteousness. Not that we're not going to sin and that we're perfect. If anyone tells you that they do not sin is lying because otherwise God would not have, you wouldn't need the Holy Spirit, right? Like if you literally never sin, we wouldn't need the Holy Spirit. So we have a sinful nature. We, when we are with Christ forevermore, then we will have a different body and we will not sin. But as we're on this earth, we're called to walk with God and to strive and work out our salvation with fear and trembling and to love our enemies and to give to those who ask, to be meek and to be pure of heart, humble, like all of these qualities that Christ is telling the disciples right now. And it's just so beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And I'm just amazed at the book of Matthew chapter five. Like that was really, really good. Um, and I'm so happy that you guys joined me here. If you guys have any questions, definitely comment them down below. I want you guys to know that Typically for these Bible studies, like I just like to read the word of God and just let it soak and let it sit and whatever God puts on my heart, like to express or to share about that, then I'll do that. Um, I'm still going through the word myself, studying for myself to see myself approved and I have my own study time where I go kind of like deeper. I just love having these videos where I do read the word of God to you guys. We can read them together just to kind of keep you guys accountable because I can make other content all I want, but truly like this is also important like reading the bible is like the number one thing and that's why in all my videos in all my commentary videos and all of those things i always include the word of god because it's my life it's literally my life so i became a believer just a believer to someone who follows god so there's two distinct things so when someone follows god the word of god is always going to be on their lips like the evidence will be there through the word of God always being on their lips. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will have, again, the Bible studies probably linked up here. You can probably click it right now. And then down in the description box, I have another recommended video here that you can watch if you don't wanna watch a Bible study right now. But for the Bible studies, you can definitely click on the playlist and save them to your watch later on YouTube. And then that way at your own time, you can go through and watch the rest of the videos. Thank you guys so much for joining me. God bless you guys. And I hope that this word definitely Definitely helped you guys in an area of your life to get stronger with the Lord.